Hey guys, Chris here with the Good Old Gamer, and welcome to our first Frame Rate Freaks discussion. All right, so I've been going on about video, the newer GPUs having issues with uh, CPU bottlenecking for a while now. I've gotten a lot of blowback. No matter how many charts and graphs and data I throw out there at you guys, buying up you know older CPUs and pairing it with uh, you know the GTX 1070, it, it just isn't enough. A lot of people just don't believe it. However, I didn't even see well, one this thing coming. thing I'd like to highlight is that up until now, NVIDIA's drivers have mostly done a great job in accommodating the scalability of its GPUs. So you still get a good bump to frame rates, even at 1080p with GTX 1080, something you don't see so much on the AMD equivalents. Now, some might say that the idea of using GTX 1080 or Titan X at 1080p is a monumental waste of GPU power, but there are plenty of high refresh rate monitor owners who might take issue with that. But the fact is that Titan X will bottleneck at lower resolutions. So check this out. Far Cry Primal at 1080 I just watched Digital Foundry's review of the brand new Pascal Titan X, or Titan XP as I'll refer to it. And they flat out found bottlenecks on the 6700K at 4.6 gigahertz with high-end DDR4 memory. At 1080p, the Titan XP will bottleneck. And that's insane because we're getting even faster refresh monitors. So if you're out there right now running with a 120 hertz or 144 hertz monitor, and you're like, well, you know, I, I want to try to get higher frame rates. I want to use my monitor. And maybe you're looking at these brand new monitors from Asus or Acer that run at 180 or 200 hertz. And you're like, okay, well, I might need to invest in like a GTX 1080 or a uh, Titan XP and maybe that'll get me to where I need to be. Apparently, that doesn't work. Apparently, even the most powerful gaming CPU out there can't even come close. It's still going to bottleneck, and this is a real problem. Not for now so much, because overall, the Titan XP is still faster than the GTX 1080 on average, even at 1080p, but think of next generation when the Titan XP performance is basically going to be the 1170, and then there's going to be an 1180, and then there's going to be, you know, a Titan X, 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 or whatever the hell they want to call it. You know, at that point, CPUs are going to be a real freaking problem because we're not going to see double the performance in CPU processing power by the end of next year. Because more than likely towards uh, Christmas of 2017, that's when we're going to see the next generation of GPUs. Unless they just push those off even further because, well, we're, we are. We're hitting CPU limitations. And like I said, this is a problem for people like me who very much can feel and see the difference once a game drops below 100 frames per second. And I can even tell when it's dropping below 120 at this point because I'm so accustomed to it. It seems that we've actually hit the point now that no matter how powerful a computer you have, due to the fact that CPUs have been so stagnant for so long, we're just not seeing the performance gains necessary to utilize these GPUs at their full potential. Now, there's a lot of people out there, and Digital Foundry also said this themselves, the cards are mostly intended for 1440p and 4K and this and that. And yes, the Titan XP is fantastic for 4K because it's literally the only graphics card that can run 4K 60 pretty much constantly. You may have to go from ultra to high, but it will do it. The point of this series is not 4K or 1440p. Some of you guys out there are running 1440p, you know, 144 or 165 hertz monitors. The ROG Swift is a fantastic monitor, and I would love to have one. It's a $700 monitor, though. So that is a little bit high for me, but you will still hit the same problems. Next generation, once the GPUs are even faster, and you might actually be able to hit 144 frames per second solid at 1440p, well, apparently you're not going to be able to. However, I did do some benchmarks that show that DirectX 12 and Vulkan will significantly reduce CPU overhead. So hopefully that's going to be a saving grace. However, I've been diving even deeper and... Even though the average frame rates are about the same between an i7 and an i5, like I said in part two of our CPU showdown, the CPU utilization on the i5s are still near that 100% mark, and your minimums are actually significantly lower. So overall, the average, because I do very long benchmarks on most of my tests, so there's a lot of frames there, 
I think it's picking up, uh, making up the difference for those lower frames. However, when you're actually playing the games on the i5s, because I still have my 4690K as my main right now, compared to the i7 2600K, it is a much better and more fluid experience because the frame rates don't dip quite as low on the 2600K as they do on the 4690K. Well, guys, I just want to throw that out there. It, it was kind of a nice vindication that, you know, we're at that point. And I've been saying this for a while. We're not talking about like an i5 4690K. They were using an i7 6700K at 4.6 gigahertz. You really can't get too much better than that. The only thing that I can see is hopefully DirectX 12 will spread out and use more cores. That's the only way that they're going to really be able to bring down the CPU overhead to the point where these super, super fast GPUs that we'll be getting can really be used uh, to run these super high refresh rate monitors. Either that or we just need to come to terms and say, look, obviously it's such a small market. Unfortunately, developers aren't catering to this. And perhaps we just need to take a step back and go, okay, I really do like this feature, but maybe 100 hertz is enough. Maybe that's where we really need to just kind of take a step back and go, we're not being catered to properly. We need to completely overpower our systems to run at these insane frame rates. I mean, personally, like I said in the uh, intro for the frame rate freaks, I don't really care about visual quality as much as I do about stability and smoothness. I might have to just take a little bit of a hit. I mean, I can play an Xbox One game that runs at 30 frames per second if I have to. It does take some adjusting. It's still doable. It's not my preferred way to play, but I'm almost at the point now where it's like, if the hardware is just completely not available, is this even really viable? Well, guys, I'm just kind of curious to what you think and what your reactions are. I mean, it's kind of interesting that you know, I'm not the only one out there saying this, and we're not talking about a weaker CPU like the 4690K anymore. We're talking about the most powerful CPU you can have for gaming right now. And uh, that's, like I said, to me, that's disconcerting. And personally, it's getting me to rethink whether or not high refresh gaming really has the legs because it doesn't seem to have the support from the community. Which is really sad because with Quake Champions coming out and them touting it to be a 120 hertz game by design, you know, I know that's going to run great because Doom can hit 144 stable on my system right now, no problem. And yes, maybe some games can do it, but it's really annoying when you're playing one game and then, you know, like Doom, and then I jump onto Fallout 4 and the game wants to lock to 30 frames per second and runs like complete dog shit. And then I have to go ahead and tweak the game and manually get it to run the way that I want it to run. And even then, then the animations are out of whack. So then I have to figure out how to make that work. It's kind of annoying when the whole community out there really does not want to support their own hardware or the available hardware out there that really high-end enthusiasts really care about. It's just kind of sad from my perspective. I really wish that they would actually focus on this or at the very least optimize better so this way 120 frames per second minimum can be achieved. I don't like the thought that that is not possible. For you other high refresh gamers out there, I know I'm probably one of the only guys out there that's really talking about this kind of stuff. Let me know what you think. Um, you guys out there that for 60 frames is enough for you, please, th this is not a segment for you guys. I see you guys pop up all the time. Oh, I have a 144 hertz monitor, but anything over 60 is fine then clearly you don't need a 144 hertz monitor. If, if 60 is fine for you, you know, that's, that's great. I mean, luckily you can get in cheaper. You're like the person that gets drunk off of two beers. That's fantastic for you, but the rest of us need a 12 pack. Sometimes it could be in a lightweight. It, it'll generally save you money. But alrighty guys, I'm gonna get on out of here. If you guys like this kind of video, please hit that like button. And if you like what we're doing here, please share with friends and please subscribe. That really helps support us and keeps us going. And I'll catch you guys on the next video and keep those frame rates flying.